Welcome to the Monday Mailbag. Today's question is how have we used groundwater sampling to advance our South Grass Valley project? Well, there are two scales at which we've integrated what we call hydrogeochemistry into our program. The first is the regional scale, which is the scale at which we originally identified the project. And the second is at the project scale where we use groundwater sampling to help make better drilling decisions. Beginning at the regional scale, our interest in this area began quite simply with identifying the larger Grass Valley as an important covered search space sitting immediately south of one of the world's largest and most profitable gold mines up here at Cortez. Reviewing the geology, there was evidence that the favorable lower plate rocks which host Cortez project out into the valley and our geophysics supported that they were likely to be within economic depths in several places like here off of the Toyabi Mountains and continuing down to the south end of the valley here. While the geology looked promising, we were still looking at 500 square kilometers, which is a search space that we couldn't simply grid drill. It was too big. So to continue, we needed to find direct evidence of gold mineralization to focus in on specific targets. And this was the first scale that we integrated the use of hydrogeochemistry. Using our small drill rigs, we completed a systematic groundwater program across the valley, drilling holes approximately every one to two kilometers to collect the groundwater samples and analyze them directly for gold. In total, we collected 366 samples, and when we reviewed the results, we ended up with two areas with highly anomalous gold and groundwater at concentrations consistent with what we see around Nevada's largest deposits. And today, these are now two of our most important projects, North and South Grass Valley. So if we look at what hydrogeochemistry allowed us to do at the regional scale, it allowed us to evaluate an entire basin for a cost of about half a million dollars, effectively adding a layer of geochemistry for $1,000 per square kilometer, which was unheard of. Then, if we look at the results, we were left with two high contrast anomalies against a low background, which is exactly what we look for in any geochemistry program and highlights what a valuable sampling medium groundwater represents. At this basin scale, hydrogeochemistry proved invaluable in that it allowed us to open up this large new covered search space where previously relying on conventional exploration tools would have been cost prohibitive. And in doing so, it allowed us to discover these two brand new projects. Though, while we had reduced this large valley down to two discrete projects, each project was still relatively large compared to the size of the deposits that we're looking for. So now we're going to look at how can we continue to use hydrogeochemistry at the project scale to begin to make the best decisions possible as we proceed to conventional deeper drilling. Zooming in on what has become our flagship property, South Grass Valley, we began by drilling more than 200 new small drill holes to significantly increase the density of our groundwater data. In addition to providing these samples, each borehole also gave us information about the water table from which we were able to establish the direction of the groundwater flow, which came from up over this saddle and then northwards out into the valley. From these boreholes, we collected more than 400 samples, and when we look at the results, as we would expect above an oxidizing carlin type system, where the gold and pathfinders are contained within the rims of pyrite or iron sulfide, we see elevated concentrations of sulfate along with the characteristic carlin pathfinders, arsenic, antimony, and most importantly, gold. Starting upstream, here we see no meaningful gold in the water. Then, as the groundwater flows downstream, we're seeing a focused initial zone of significant gold enrichment here, followed by a second, perhaps broader zone of enrichment here. So now let's look at how we can use this high resolution groundwater data to help decide where we place our next drill holes. Those already familiar with the project will know that our exploration concept at South Grass Valley is that the mineralizing Carlin type hydrothermal fluids were sourced from the district scale Water Canyon structural corridor and then flowed up and to the west, 
within our predominant host unit, this purple unit here, which we call the CLM, and which hosts our primary East Golden Gorge target, shown here in pink. Looking at the distribution of golden groundwater, what we see is where the CLM unit projects closest to the surface is exactly where we're seeing the northern zone of enrichment, providing another layer of evidence to support our target concept, which directly helps to guide our current phase of drilling aimed at following the CLM downwards back towards the structural corridor. If we now return to looking at the initial, more southern zone of enrichment, what we see is that the gold is being added right along the edge of the Grass Valley stock, immediately above where our target and CLM host unit come up against this intrusive, the margin of which is characterized by highly fractured and broken bedrock that provides increased opportunities for the groundwater to mix and interact with these features at depth to result in this near surface expression of enriched golden groundwater. Just as at the zone of enrichment to the north, the fact that this location where our target at depth has the opportunity to interact with the surface water above is exactly where we're seeing the gold being added to the groundwater provides another layer of evidence to support our target concept and again directly guides how we're planning the whole locations for our current drilling program. In summary, we began by using hydrogeochemistry at a regional scale to help us to discover an entirely new carlin-type mineral system. And we've progressed to now also using hydrogeochemistry at the project scale to help support our drilling decisions at what we believe is a district that presents the opportunity to make multiple discoveries all in an otherwise completely blind, covered setting where the rest of the industry has yet to establish a similarly effective workflow to go after these potentially globally significant new deposits. So, I hope we help to demonstrate how we integrate the use of groundwater sampling at each stage of investigation. I'd like to thank you for watching and invite you to subscribe to watch the next Monday Mailbag.